This video is intended to give an introduction to the Solid Edge integration for DDM. It will cover creating a part record, adding it to an assembly, creating a drawing and releasing the drawing and assembly. And finally, it will cover making a change to the assembly and up issuing the changed items. So we're currently logged into DDM. We're going to close the DDM window so that we can see our Solid Edge session and here's a new part that I'm creating. We're just going to complete this with some chamfers and now we're ready to store this new model back to DDM. So in the Solid Edge environment we have a PDM integrator ribbon bar that gives us all of the functions that we need to interact between Solid Edge and DDM. In this case we've got a new component that we want to store to the database so we click on save. Firstly a local copy is made on my workstation and then the DDM properties window opens allowing me to allocate a part number and description to this new part that we're creating. So here I'm going to use DDM's configurable auto numbering system and we're going to select to make a manufactured component. And finally, we're going to give this item a description, in this case, wrist pin. So if I click on OK, my new part will be uh, created and stored to the database. And we get confirmation of that with this save summary window. If I close this from session, and return to DDM and look at my recent items. At the top of my recent items list is the wrist pin that I've just created. If we look at the properties of this, then we have a preview of the item and we also have information about the material used, who created it and when it was created. Okay, so having created my part, what we're going to do now is to put it into this piston head assembly. So we'll load this into Solid Edge. And now we'll return to DDM to get the wrist pin to assemble into this. And to do this, we can use the load subpart function. Find the wrist pin, double click to load it into session. And then we'll just use standard Solid Edge assembly techniques to position this in the in the assembly and the pin is now positioned and so in the same way we can store this back to DDM so we'll just use save again so as this assembly has already been stored to DDM it doesn't prompt us with the properties window it will just save and update that assembly in the database and again if we look at the save summary we can see that the assembly has now been updated and saved. So next we'll complete this by creating a drawing of the assembly. So we use a, a standard template that's been configured to, to work with DDM and we will decide on the views that we want. So for the purposes of this, we won't uh, add any annotation or, or dimensions to the drawing, but in the same way as previously, we can save this back to DDM just using the save function. Again, a local copy is made on my workstation. And now we're prompted to store the drawing back to DDM. So it's defaulted to the same uh, number as the assembly. This can be changed if required. And the description has been taken also from the model of the assembly. So we'll click on OK to save this. And again, we have confirmation that the drawing has been saved. And if we look at the drawing title block, we can see that the description, the drawing number, the revision and who created and when has all automatically been populated for us. 
So we can close this from session. I'm going to clear my local working directory, return to DDM, and we've now got our drawing stored to the database. You'll see that we can start to interrogate this. So if we look at the drawing, we can see that it is related to this uh, assembly and we can see the structure of the assembly by drilling in again. In the same way from the assembly we can see the related components and if we look at relations then we can see if there is a drawing related to this assembly. If I don't have Solid Edge uh, installed and I want to preview the drawing then I can right click on it and select preview and this will open the PDF of the drawing and in this case the drawing is watermarked to indicate that it's work in progress and shouldn't be used uh, for production. So what we're now going to do is to release this assembly and I can do that by right clicking on the drawing and selecting change state or on the assembly and we'll open the release manager by clicking on change state. In this window if there are drawings of the components then we will see those by clicking on expand all. In this case um, there aren't any component drawings. So to change the state of these items that we've been working on we can select them and click on set state and mark these as release. And we can add some comments here and then complete this by clicking OK. And our assembly is now released. So what we're going to do now is to make a change to this assembly. So if we load it into session, what we're going to do is to modify the wrist pin. So we will open this And we're going to put a hole through the center of the wrist pin. So the part is modified and remember at the minute this is still the released part and so we don't have any permission to make changes to this. But we're going to return to the assembly which is also released and the assembly has updated with the modified component. And what we're going to use this time is single save to make a change to this assembly and, and component. So the single save manager window opens and it's indicating the things that we've modified in this session. So we can see the highlighted items. You can also see that include drawings is selected so that any modifications will also update on related drawings. In this case we've modified the wrist pin and we want to save that as a new item. So we'll select save new and now in this window we can click here to select um, a new number. So this is updated. For the assembly and the assembly drawing we're going to create a new issue. So we select to create a new issue, issue 2. If there is an associated change number we can populate this here and we can also fill in information about the description of the change. And we can also fill in if we want a, a long description of the change. So our changes are complete and we can click on OK to update that information in the database. So again, if we look at the save summary, then the new issues have been created and we have a, a new number for the wrist pin that has also been saved. If we look at the properties of this item, 
we can see that this is issue two of this assembly that we have open in session. And if we go and find and load the drawing, then we can see that this is updated. It's issue two of the drawing. And we can see that the revision history has been updated with the change that has taken place. So if we close these from session and return to DDM, you can see that the previous issue of the items that were released have now moved to an under review status, whereas the new items are all work in progress. So next we're going to take a look at the bill of materials for this assembly. So if I right click on the assembly and look at bill of materials, then the bill of materials editor opens showing me the bill of materials for this assembly with the quantity of each of the items. So two piston rings, one oil ring, etc. What we're going to do is to add um, what we call a non-drawn item to this bill of materials, but there are, there are other things that we can do with this editor. For example, we may have modeled things that we don't want to include in the bill of materials. And in this case, we can select and hide items from the bill of materials. But the example we're going to look at is adding something to this bill of materials. So what I can use is the category browser to go and search for a set of lubricants that are already stored and approved in the system. And in this case, it's this one that we're going to, to use. What we can also do here is see any related documents. And in this case, there is a data sheet linked to this lubricant that I can view and make sure it has the properties that I require. In this case, I want to add this to my bill of materials. And I can do that either by dragging and dropping into the bill of materials window, or I can right click and say copy reference, or I can use Control C, Control V sh keyboard shortcuts to copy this to the bill of materials. So if I open the bill of materials window, I can now paste this in here and this is added to my bill of materials. Because this hasn't come from the CAD system, we don't know what quantity is required. But in this case, I can assign a quantity here. Here's my unit of measure and I can uh, add some notes here. In this case, say, and apply that. And now my bill of materials is complete. If I click on OK, having completed all of my changes now, I'm ready to release the up-issued assembly. So as before, we can right click, select to change the state, expand all to make sure we've captured any drawings. And now we can select the modified and up-issued components and set these to a released state. If I click on OK, my new assembly is released and you'll see the old assembly is now marked as superseded. If we look at the new drawing, then we can see that this has a, um, a released watermark and has the revision history on the, on the drawing title block as well. So this video was intended to give an overview of the solid edge integration for DDM, showing how to create parts, drawings and assemblies, and how to release information, edit bills of materials, and up issue changes to modified models and drawings.